Good morning, welcome to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Graddick, your host. Can't even get my name right. I want to wish everybody a happy Columbus Day, and we're very honored to have in studio Sammy Robinson, president of the Harrison County Veterans Association. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Steve. Great well, to be here. Welcome back. You've Great. Been, you've been right. back. You're a veteran uh, yeah. in more ways than one. You got my own seat here with my name on it. Yeah, there you go. You got your own coffee bar. There you go. Um, we're, we've got a special guest coming in next Monday morning, and I really want to get you to come in and kind of preview for it, that program for us. But before we do, uh, let's give a little background on Sammy Robinson. You uh, have basically spent your whole adult life working on memorials. Of course, the League Log Memorial Park, I guess, was your first. You've also done uh, the Carroll County Veterans Park. How many parks have you worked on? I've got seven. Seven? Uh, Where are they? Well, you, you got Carrollton, you got the one in Tallapoosa, Somerville, um, uh, Johns Creek, building one now at uh, uh, Dunwoody, um, uh, help people out west do some uh, memorials out there. And uh, so, in Jackson, Georgia, we've got one there. What kind of skill set does it need to do that? Well, you got you got to know your granite. you got to know how to set these things. These are a little different than setting a headstone in a cemetery. Why? And uh, because they're larger, uh, and if you don't set them just right, you'll have problems down the road. It's it's uh, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun, and uh, we have a lot of fun with them. Our, when did League Log Park go in? That was in the eighty. Uh, well, we started in in eighty eight. We dedicated it in nineteen ninety one. Yeah, I was there when you were when the uh, what is it? The obelisk was uh, right. The obelisk. You had yeah. a uh, record truck. You know, you know what. <laughs> That was some deal right there. And this but, wasn't a rollback like today. No, this was the chains no. and everything. It was, and we wanted to use local people, and Jim Davis is in the record service at that time. He said, Sam, I can set that. I was scared to death. Actually, I went to every uh, insurance company I could find that morning to try to insure it. They wouldn't do it. And uh, But we got it. We got it set. So now I use cranes. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Where'd you learn all the skills to do and working with granite and everything? Self-taught, I guess. Um, uh, Homer Huxley was in the business at that time. He helped us, and I saw what was going on, and he taught me a little bit. And as you go on, you, you learn how to do it. Huh, uh, huh. So why do you do it? Well, I love it. Uh, it's uh, I want to make sure that our veterans are not forgotten. And when I came back from Vietnam, there wasn't anything here to remember our veterans and i saw uh friends lose their life over there and uh barry league one of my schoolmates that was in my wedding before i went lost his life there and i wanted to make sure that uh, uh they wasn't forgotten well when you think of like barry lee or ray mckibben what do, what do you think about well they gave their life uh for something that we all believed in and then in the end we find out it was a total lie mm. uh so it doesn't set too well with you but but I want to make sure they're never forgotten for what they did. They never uh, live long enough to know uh, anything other than past. Uh, some of them were 15, 16, 17 years old over there. It was a kid's war. We're going to get more into that. But understand we've also now have bro not only broken ground, but we're seeing the beginnings of the West Georgia Military Museum. We are, uh, thanks to the... Uh, uh, Harrison County School System who donated us the land. We now have the um, uh, concrete pad poured. It's 150 by 100. We just got through pouring uh, 370 yards of concrete for the foundation and for the pad. So we'll be working on our building, uh, getting enough money to get that building up. And How much money are you going to need? Well, the whole total project is going to cost about, uh, we're estimating somewhere in the neighborhood of 500000 We spent Hundred and twenty-five thousand of uh, money up to this time, with fifty thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars worth of in-kind uh, service, and we have a lot of in-kind coming down the road. But you got to have money to do certain things with, and the people have been very nice. The companies, Carroll County, Harrelson County, all of them are dipping in and, and giving us what we need. And like you say, a lot of in-kind from the county and everyone. Else. Well, it's 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 in-kind from. Uh, the standpoint of the land from the people who graded this the architects the, all of these people charge you didn't charge you anything uh, Randy Henson the concrete people was unreal charged us very little to pour all that concrete uh, Davis concrete gave us a big discount mm -hmm. on the concrete itself 
All those things add up. It adds up. It's it's without it uh, with with people like us and just uh, uh, veterans out here beating on doors. Uh, it's it's it can be hard. We're going to take a break. Come back. We'll talk about our upcoming uh, guest uh, one week from today. We'll be back with more after this. The AP Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined advanced placement curriculum track to earn a series of distinctions upon graduation. This journey enables academically prepared students to pursue college level studies throughout 17 AP courses in five subject categories while enrolled at OMA. I'm Patrick Uran, Head of School, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Good morning. Welcome back to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Grady, your host. we got Sammy Robinson, president of the Harold's County Veterans Association. Tell us about our uh, upcoming guest next Monday and why we're bringing them in. Well, uh, to be the president of the, uh, her name is Trime. Uh, she's a Vietnamese. Uh, she's the president of the uh, Vietnamese American community of Georgia, uh, which is about 80,000 strong throughout the state. They're mainly around Atlanta and that area there. That's a lot. It is, and um, they are very, very, uh, they're patriotic. One of, one of our, a little quick aside, one of our uh, transmitter engineers, yeah. Uh, Van, who's become a good friend, is from Vietnam. Oh, yeah, wow. He's bright, and he's, yeah. oh, he's just wonderful. Uh, they are, um, and they um, uh, these are the, if you will, the, I guess the granddaughters of, of, uh, uh, of some of the South Vietnamese soldiers and all that fought there, and I met some of them. Uh, but they came over, uh, their, their grandmothers and grandfathers came over with uh, the boat people back in the day. And uh, so we are... Um, uh, I'm working with them in Dunwoody to build uh, the Vietnamese Veterans Memorial, uh, Vietnamese and, and American Veterans Memorial. It is some more sites. Describe, describe it to us. Well, it will be, there'll be three panels to the left and three panels to the right, uh, four by eight panels. The American side will be to the left, the Vietnamese will be to the right. In the center, there will be two bronze soldiers, uh, seven feet tall. Uh, one of them is a South Vietnamese, and the other is an American soldier standing side by side with weapons, as we did there. So this is this is a tremendous uh, feat. There's only this is, will be the second one east of the Mississippi River. There's only six in the whole uh, United States of this type, and so it's just something else. Yeah, and this is in the Dunwoody area? It is. It's in Dunwoody. Um, uh, they have a huge park there, and they've donated a piece of property for this to be built on. Yeah, and, and so the Vietnamese of Georgia are raising the funds They are. For They're raising the funds, and, um, uh, and, and uh, there's a, a, a Vietnamese group or, or veterans group in Atlanta that's working with them. How'd uh, they find you? Uh, somebody told on the, on the internet or something. I'm yeah. glad they did. If I'd have found out about this uh, several years ago, I would have tried to uh, got it moved in some other direction. Yeah, uh, I'd, have, I'd have headed them this way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, who will be with us next Monday? Uh, Treme will be here. John Butler will be here. John Butler is the guy that's working with the, um, the Vietnamese on this project from day one. He's the one that contacted me two years ago. And uh, we went over everything. We've been to all of our parks that I have built so they could see what the work was and how they could come up with something. And uh, uh, so we'll have a uh, – and there will be – I think there will be one South Vietnamese soldier here. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to yes. it. And uh, uh, it's going to be interesting be to interesting. hear th- their stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So basically, when we look back on Vietnam, in your opinion, did we win the war there? Well, the soldier won the war. The federal government gave it away. How so? Well, we won that war. Um, Actually, could have won it almost any time we wanted to, but the government didn't want to. And after the war, the generals will tell you all we would have had to done was cut the Ho Chi Minh trail, trail in Cambodia. And some of our generals wanted to do that, but the, the, the powers in Washington refused to do it. We had an agreement made by Nixon uh, in 74, I believe it was. Um, uh, he bombed them back to the peace table, and they signed an agreement. And he said, if you ever cross that border, I'll annihilate you. Well, they framed him, throwed him out of office. And, um, and then the Ford administration cut off all supplies to South Vietnam. They had nothing to fight with, um, no ammo. I think they wound up with about 60 rounds per when the North Vietnamese crossed that border. The United States sat here and watched that happen, played golf on a golf course while the South Vietnamese government that we went there to protect and secure and save those people, they sat there and watched them uh, uh, be murdered. I think they murdered something like 30,000 from the time they crossed the DMZ. They got to Saigon. So basically in 72, we got out, and they were ready after the bombing to go to the peace table. Yep. And the Vietnamese had taken over at that point, and then Congress cut off they the did. support. They did. The Vietnamese were doing really well because they were defending each one of their villages. Instead of going out in the jungle area, they were defending that. We wasn't there. Oh, there were some advisors there. But when they cut off the funds, that was the end of it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we traded the war um, uh, to be able to send our companies over there, the multi-trillionaires who buys the politician that starts the wars. Now you didn't have a war, but let's send our companies over there and we'll get free uh, or, or cheap labor. This is where we are. And, and the, the government lost that war, gave it away, and instead of defending the South Vietnamese like we uh, said we were, they helped the North Vietnamese win that. When you think of that, and you and you must think of what was it, fifty eight thousand that were Ameri- That's Americans, Americans That's only Americans, Americans yeah. that were were killed. Yeah. And I'm, I don't know how many wounded, and then I don't know how many South Vietnamese military and civilians. About two and a half million. Really? Yes, the numbers are there, and um, uh, and that's, you know, that's uh, actually in the Tet Offensive in 1968. Uh, after that was over with, the Viet Cong was no more. They were gone, done away with, killed, and the North Vietnamese took over that war. From uh, January the 30th to March the 15th in 1968, there were 43,000 enemy uh, soldiers killed that we could count. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a lot in three, in 45 days. You know, in 2023, we, we forget because when we talk about Kennedy, we talk about Vietnam, we talk about uh, the Cold War, we talk about all of that. We don't, now we don't think about or really understand what communism was and that, that we were motivated so much by fighting communism, mm-hmm. which killed estimates range all yeah. over the place, but uh, Stalin and, and Mao killed at least 100 million passively or actively, i.e. starvation and just a bullet in the head. So we were really fighting communism back then as we understood it. And and now we don't understand it seemingly at all. Well, we don't, and the politicians have put it that way, and, and, and a lot of the um, uh, uh, so-called high news media today, uh, they, they, care. They, don't, they don't care. This country, and I don't think it can be turned around, uh, it's gone as I know it. You, you mentioned the news media. One, one of the premier things of the war was Walter Con- Cronkite, and he's still lauded today in a large part, but he was the one who really changed journalism and he changed the tone of the war, didn't he? He did. He made the statement right after Tet Offensive that we now, he sees now that we can win this war. It is a winnable war, and which was fantastic. Well, about three days later, the government got a hold of him, and he changed his attitude and said, no, nope, we can't do it. We had the war won then. We had it won several times. But uh, uh, when you got those to be that wants to make millions of dollars off of uh, human lives, they're all after for money. It's just the way it is today. That was really the premier time where a journalist stepped in 
yeah. uh, opinion wise well you're absolutely right and and two a lot of you journalists there uh, didn't write they didn't write most of those stories they had uh, people hired that went out into the field and did the stories and came in and gave it to them and a lot of them were uh, north vietnamese uh, uh, generals and worked for the north vietnamese it was writing our stories i've seen videos of where they've caught them and here they are double standard he kind of referenced it. RFK Jr. says the most important speech given was Eisenhower's farewell speech where he referenced the military-industrial complex. In his f- first draft, he called it military-industrial-congressional complex, but he dropped congressional, and now it's become part of our discussion ever since. How, In your mind, how does that work? Well, you know, I, I, I don't think there, there's an undercurrent in this country, and it always has been. I don't think the president has the final say. Uh, there are people running this country that you don't know. And the FBI, the CIA, and the DOJ, in my opinion, are the SARS organizations on the face of the earth. Uh, they, they run things. They do things. If they want you, they'll come in this studio, grab you, and they'll take you, put you in jail, although the Constitution Bill of Rights says that can't happen. The Constitution Bill of Rights is nothing but a piece of paper. And if you don't follow the rules and, and, and the regulations of that, you're doomed, and that is exactly what's happening right now. Yeah, Kennedy said he was going to take um, uh, CIA, break it into a million pieces, and scatter it to the wind. It needs to be because the CIA is the ones that goes all over the country starting these conflicts or these wars. They're tied in with the mafia. They're tied in with the uh, uh, the drug dealers, this is where they get their money because Congress does not allocate money for them to do some of the things that they're doing. The Congress and the legislature don't even know what they're doing. And they're doing these things because they're getting the money from the cartels. It's, it's right now they're getting no telling how many billions of dollars from the drug deals that are being made uh, with the cartels. And we're sitting here, uh, go to work in the morning, come home, eat your popcorn, watch that television, go to bed, could care less. People better wake up. This thing is going to happen in this country, and it's not far off. When, when we hear about, and I don't know what the current tally is, I think it's like uh, $80 billion now of uh, funding, be it loans or whatever form, going to Ukraine. They say two-thirds of it is used to buy munitions from America. So it, it's kind of a circle. It is, but your but your warlords in this country is the ones making the money off of it. Mm-hmm. It's blood money. Well, so basically, the quote unquote never ending wars that we've experienced since Absolutely. Vietnam Absolutely. Have, have been part of yeah. this. About every ten or fifteen years, we get you, we're going to we run around the world sticking our necks and, and our head into things that we don't need to. We're going to stick our head in one one of these days. It's going to be chopped off, and that's the end of us. You that's know. What's uh, they, they say that one reason we escalated in Vietnam was that we had so many helicopters and we needed to use them. That's right. You did. Yes, sir. And we had, uh, listen, I was with the first air cow. We had them. And, um, uh, but the poor guys that flew those things, uh, you know, wasn't any protection. You could take your fist and run it through the side of the door. Yeah, well, now the and seats were armored, but that was it. They right? had, a, had an armored plate. Uh, on each side of it yeah. and that was it the that wind, was it. That windshields are made out of fiberglass wow <clears throat> and the bullets come right through the bottom of it yeah so, so eisenhower was uh was right he was absolutely right he knew he knew but we don't seem to learn from these things and why the, the people of this country keep supporting that i don't know our guest this morning is sammy robinson president of the harold's county veterans association we'll be back with more after this Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating a 61-year legacy. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us for our annual fall festival. On Friday, October 27th at 3.30 p.m., join us at the OMA gym for food, fun, and fellowship. Costume, games, raffles, and competitions are just a few of our fall festival exciting activities. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. 
find us at Tanner.org. Good morning. Welcome back to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Raddick, your host. Delighted to have you with us. We're uh, very pleased to have in the studio today Sammy Robinson, President of Harris County Veterans Association. Give us a little preview of uh, next Monday. It's going to be an interesting show, uh, and we hope that you'll join us then. And we're talking about Vietnam, and we will be next Monday. Um, one thing that I only knew, came to learn about in recent years was, I don't know exactly what year, but at some point after we left, long after we left Vietnam and, and everything, the Chinese communists invaded North Vietnam. Yeah, they got in a tassel over there for some reason or the other. I don't, I don't know why or whatever, but a lot of people uh, don't know and don't realize that the Chinese fought in Vietnam. They fought. They put up the sound missile sites that shot our F-105s down and a lot, and we knew it. And refused to take them out. Air Force. Air, Air Force knocked them all out. They shot down Wayne Waddell and captured him and mm-hmm. gave him the opportunity to either go to China or go to North Vietnam as a prisoner. He chose to go to North Vietnam. Yeah, that our interview with him is on our YouTube site. Yeah, it is. It yeah, is. It's really, it's really yeah. amazing. There are there are no telling the number. The United States always say, "Well, we don't leave our men behind." Well, yes, they do. We left a lot of them behind in Vietnam. Tell North us about Vietnam. that. Well, I mean, we see the black MIA flags. Yeah, well, that's to represent the POW and MIAs, and never forget them. But they were uh, POWs that was left uh, in Vietnam, and we never got. The number wasn't correct. You can't get it. They won't add up. And not only that, but uh, China had a lot of black. You, you never saw any prisoners coming from China, did you? Well, they mm-hmm. had them. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they captured them, and they kept them there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the government did not want the p- people here in the United States to know that the Chinese soldier was fighting in that war. Mm-hmm. But they were. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, um, uh, it's, it's our people's been dumbed down. Mm-hmm. And they don't realize, and very, very few people, if you're not a veteran or, or, or if you don't have people uh, in your family that's a veteran, the average citizen out here doesn't care too much for you anymore. When uh, what we see over the weekend is occur, or that is occurring in Israel, and, and we talk about the Chinese invading uh, Vietnam. It seems like we're putting ourselves at risk on the south border, southwestern border, by having an open border. I mean, because terrorists, it only takes a handful of terrorists to do, as we know from 9-11, to yeah. do some de- real damage. If you think 9-11 was terrible, you just wait. I can see it coming. There's, there's no telling how many uh, people that hate us has come across that border that this administration is welcome in open arms. Uh, There is hundreds, if not thousands, of Chinese uh, communists that have already infiltrated that border and are in this country. They didn't come here to to go down to McDonald's and buy a hamburger. Mm -hmm. They come here to do harm to this country, and that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to wake up one morning, and and you will have no idea what's going on. They're Mm -hmm. not doing it just to come here. But no one seems to care, Mm -hmm. you know. Let them poor folks come on in and kill us. And that's what's happening. Every mm-hmm. country needs a border. Mm-hmm. What's going on in Israel, Ukraine? Are we entering World War III? Well, I, it's already here. Uh, you, you, it's already here. Uh, I heard this ignorant fool from Florida, I don't even know his name, uh, yesterday, just for a second, uh, has no problem with sending troops uh, to Israel. I do. I have a problem sending to Ukraine. We don't need to be there none of our business it well it may be our business but i you're not send our troops over there if you want to send troops take the multi-trillionaires send them and then when they go i will think about coming after them but well, not until they do well part of it too i mean it, it, we call it you know the no win wars i mean unless you have a clear mission a clear exit strategy and you intend to win whatever that takes I mean, you're pretty well doomed to failure. You are. We haven't won anything since World War II. We were lucky to win that one. We ran from Korea. You mm-hmm. ran from Vietnam. But now we ran Korea in part because the Chinese were amassing on the border. That's right. But you're either going to support it or you don't support it, and you don't quit halfway through. And But we ran from uh, uh, Korea. We ran from Vietnam. You ran from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iraq. We had no business being in there. We ran from uh, – I, I wouldn't – I don't know why people even trust this country. Because we don't live up to well, what to we go, say. To go full circle, 
But in my first question, did we win in Vietnam? You said the soldiers did. Yeah. So there's really there's really two two dynamics they are. going they are. on. We won we won every battle we were, we we went into, and had them to where they uh, was on their knees, and then politics came in and destroyed it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Because because of the uh, uh, military complex and the money that they wanted to make, they 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 saw that they couldn't make enough money off of the body bags and the caskets and all this stuff of our American soldiers. So uh, they just throwed in with the North Vietnamese and uh, <coughs> overrun the South Vietnam. And then a few years later, sent all of our companies over there to be uh, manufacturing the goods that you wear today with slave labor. Yeah. Yeah, that's See, they took part. the country over when they, right? It, the minute that they hit Saigon, mm-hmm. all rights was done away with Mm -hmm. they took all the ones they didn't kill which was Mm -hmm. thousands and thousands and put them in re-education camps Mm -hmm. these folks that be here next week can tell you about it Mm -hmm. yeah i'm looking forward to that so So ultimately it does come down to freedom yeah yeah all right well give us a give us a little preview again a little preview because we're gonna have to wrap it up about uh next monday who are we going to see and how's you how are you in the world involved with this well it's 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 just great it's the um uh vietnamese and american uh um, uh, of georgia uh actually vietnamese american community of georgia that's their name and there's a there's a there's a huge number of them and they love this country and they're building a uh, Vietnamese American Memorial Park in Dunwoody, and they contacted me to build it. And uh, so that's how I got involved with them. I've been to two of their meetings and, and shindigs, and they are something else. But they fly their Vietnamese flag just like we do the American flag. Mm-hmm. They're great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I understand you've got an event to help raise money for the West Georgia Military Museum. Yeah, we uh, we uh, always, um, um, uh, we got, a, uh, as you know, our uh, 19th year of our freedom ride which is our motorcycle ride coming up on november the 11th which is veteran years 19 years you you remember yeah, that yeah. you were there yeah. and you're at every one of them uh the um yes in 19 years so we started young because we're, we're only 55 <laughs> i wish i wish <laughs> i wish but yeah and and um but that'll be on november the 11th november the 11th this time this year will be on saturday We'll have around 100 bikes or so. And From where to where? Well, it'll start at uh, the Veterans Memorial Park uptown at Lee Globe Memorial Park, wind up at Helton Highland Park on 70 Highway where all of our military equipment is. We'll feed them and uh, have a lot of uh, things to give away and um, all this good stuff. It's always a great event. But with only a minute left, uh, these parks, tell us about the educational benefit to the young kids. For it's, this. it's very educational. We have school kids to come out, and we, we go through the parks with them as a group and explain to them everything that is in there. That's why this West Georgia Military Museum is going to be – Fantastic. It is an educational center for West Georgia, Harrison County, Carroll County, Paul County, which will be tied in with the school system, uh, huge libraries, chapel, theater, um, all of these things to educate you on what you see. You're not just uh, going to walk through there and, oh, here's something. No, we're going to educate you on what this is, and we're going to tell the truth. Our guest this morning has been Sammy Robinson, president of the Harrelson County Veterans Association, and looking forward to next Monday's show. And we thank you for tuning in. Go out and make it a great day. You're in tune to WLBB, Carrollton.